G'day everybody, welcome along to the Level Up event for the week. I'm excited to have you guys here today. It is a beautiful day here in Fiji. I hope it's nice wherever you are around the world and I hope you're having a great weekend and I can guarantee you this is going to be some cream on the top or cherry on the top of the weekend. The training that you guys are going to get today from the gentleman in the pitch there, Mr. Rick Carney, um, I, I just want to share a couple of little things. I first got exposed to this training uh, a while back, like I guess probably 15 years ago. Um, and then I started a, uh, I guess, a business relationship with Mr. Rick Carney. Um, I'm guessing now probably 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, it was a while back. Um, and his understanding around the information that he's going to share with you today is second to none. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, he's an expert in this space um, and what he's going to share with you, if it uh, can do for you similar things that it's done for me oh, over the years, um, you're in for a treat because not only has this, it, it's allowed me to um, understand people around me better um, and be able to effectively communicate with them better. Um, but it's also allowed me to understand myself better and why I react certain ways and, um, and you know, why, <laughs> why I, I get triggered sometimes and, uh, and that, you know, I guess that, how to deal with that. So um, I'm going to not take up any more of your time and turn it directly over to Mr. Rick County. I'll just stop my screen share. Um, are you able to come off mute there, Rick? I don't think I've hard muted everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the call. Thank you so much for giving up some time and jumping on and pouring some value into the crew. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is pretty much an exciting topic for you as well, right? Yeah, I think it's really nice and it's, it's interesting. <laughs> Michael, to reflect on it's been that long. Is it maybe 12 more years? But yeah, I guess human behaviour is, is something I've been um, pretty interested in and it's been a, a, a personal joy, I guess, to help a bit like yourself, you know, understand it to a greater degree. Um, is it a passion? Well, I guess if, if living life and finding some happiness and having some success is a passion, yes, definitely. <laughs> it's in that space. So lovely to be on. It's probably afternoon for you, is it? Uh, yeah, just past one o'clock. Awesome. So good afternoon and good morning, everybody, wherever you are. So do you want me to leap into it now? Yeah, do I need to uh, give you sharing capabilities and so forth? Yes, that'd be stunning if you can. I've got a, uh, a 437 slides. I'm going to spend the next five hours going through with you all. <laughs> okay. Yes, that is, that's my small attempt at humour while Michael's uh, allowing me to share. I'm just going to so make it's great to be able to come on and say hi. Lots of familiar faces and uh, lovely to see you all here spending a bit of time on Sunday morning investing in your future, investing in uh, having the best life possible. Uh, I'm going to share some of my thoughts. This topic is, is massive. I'm sure if you're any sort of a student of human behaviour, then you'll understand that human beings are very, very, very complex creatures. You know, we are astoundingly complex. And in some ways, the irony is that there's simplicity to us as well. And so having said all that, this is a snapshot overview. I'd urge you to take some notes, but what I'll do when I'm finished, I do have about 30 slides I'm going to go through quite quickly. I'll save those as a, a PDF and get them through to Michael so you can get hold of them, if you like, to have a reference point later. So if you're not that good at taking lots and lots of notes, I think there'll be some information here you can reflect on later and maybe it'll make a bit more sense. Uh, as, we, as we start to, I would urge you, like everything, this is data, it's information. It's, uh, there's a lot of it, and some of you who are in the, in the right category will be excited with a lot of data, as we'll talk about shortly. And some of you are going to be really challenged by the amount of data that we have, which is all part of what this lesson's all about, uh, this experience, this journey. And so I would urge you then to be able to utilise the resource later on to refresh. But implementation is the big thing, as always, it's one thing to get data, information, knowledge, but it's about implementing. So this is one thing, one discipline, if you want to call it that, I would urge you is practice, practice, practice. You have to become conscious of it, do it consciously and consciously practice. I believe I do it fairly unconsciously now, but that's because of many, many years of practice. 
And so we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So bear with me while I share my screen. How are we going there? Can you see that, guys? Awesome. Wonderful. Uh, just uh, but like anything, begin with the end in mind. As Mr. Stephen Covey says, uh, my goal for you today is to be able to increase, you know, the knowledge of around human behaviour. And hopefully that will allow you to be able to, you know, improve or change. And that can be relationships personally with your team, extended family, close family. And of course, then that flows on to increasing your influence with human beings, which is influence in your business as such. So that's my goal for the next uh, four hours, as I said. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go fairly quickly. So as I said, if you miss it, I'm going to shoot, make these slides available to you. So don't be too concerned if we don't. So DISC is the discipline we're going to be talking about. It will become apparent. So it's about human behaviour. And so understanding the style that we have, and of course, how it's perceived by others their perception of how we behave is more important sometimes than how we behave. So identifying others, of course, styles then. Here's a big one. See the word there, adjust. So the key when you have this knowledge and the way you implement is to be able to adjust your behavior so people are more at ease with you. Now, of course, a lot of this applies massively in face-to-face -face interactions, but our world has moved to so much more online and to so much more digital that it is so be become even more apparent in the written word, in you know things like Facebook Lives, and there's so many other mediums now that this becomes applicable to, but I can guarantee you it is still applicable. And so, as I mentioned earlier, to enhance our influence and therefore our leadership in our business or other areas of our lives. So what is DISC? So having said that, let's see what it's not, because it's critical to be aware of what this is not. So DISC is not about, and you can read those things there, it's not about someone's level of intelligence, intellect, nothing to do with that whatsoever. Our values and our beliefs, we will, of course, have values and beliefs that drive our behaviour in a certain way as well, and they can be common or different among all human beings. This is more of our behaviors that are entrenched underneath our values. So be aware that extreme values, extreme behavior can be driven by a value system that's way out of the box. And there are plenty of those as examples on the planet, aren't there? Extremism in its form. And so it's not about skills or experience necessarily. So it's about our core behaviors, who we really are at our very organic level. Uh, and again, education training, and very much so not about right or wrong. I want you all to, as you assess this and reflect for yourself as we go through it, none of these four categories, if you like, are right or wrong. Really big points. Subliminally, as we go through, when we talk about some of the behaviours that may, may be um, reflective of you, it is not wrong or right. It just is. Huge, huge component of this. You make it wrong in your own mind, you've missed the point. If you make someone else wrong in their behavior, you've missed the point. So make sure you write that down. There is no right or wrong in these behaviors. They just are how we are as people. So uh, DISC is about then, so we see what it's not about, but it is about how we do things, how our behavior shows up. So how people behave and how we can respond to them, gets, get their needs and our needs met. Uh, Tony Robbins teaches us that every single behaviour we have in our lives is to get our human needs met. And I know Michael and Beck have done some great work on those six human needs. I'm sure you've all seen that along the way. Wonderful stuff. So our behaviour gets those needs met as such. Nice little point down the bottom there. And so you can see there that point's pretty important as well. So it's worth remembering that people do things for their reasons, not ours. Ours. You know, people aren't necessarily, unless uh, it's our partners, <laughs> we're not necessarily there to meet the needs of others, are we? We're here on the planet to meet our needs. And remember that as you move through interacting with other human beings and looking to build a business. Okay, here's how it looks. This is a summary. You can draw this, a nice little habit if you've got a piece of paper is to draw this very quickly because this is the simplistic version and the simplest way to be able to, <coughs> excuse me, to be able to discern how other people sit. 
<clears throat> Excuse me, I need to have a drink. So draw a cross, if you like. See the X, the, uh, the two axes there in the middle. And that'll give us four quadrants. So if you look up the top, uh, up the top, so that's the top half, everything above that uh, horizontal line, people in this, these two areas, this half of the quadrant, are task-focused. They love procedure. They love things to do. They love lists. So procedures, very clear, isn't it? Below that line, those two quadrants, the individuals here are more people-focused. So two things here. You're either task-focused or you're people-focused. Remember, these are fairly broad generalizations. As I go through some of these in your mind internally, somebody might be saying, oh, well, you know, I'm a bit of both. Yeah, I like people, but oh, I like to have a project and some tasks as well. So if you're saying that to yourself, yes, that's true. But rest assured, one of these will be your primary default way you like to operate. There will be one. And yes, we are capable of doing the others. Remember, it's not right or wrong. It's not that we're incapable. It's our preference as such in the way we behave. Then if you look at the vertical axes and look left and right. So the left-hand side, as we look at it, if you look at that two quadrants, you'll see those people are generally reserved. Their behavior is more reserved. Some people use the word introverted as such, not as madly expressive. And on the right-hand side, if you look at that, the right-hand side on the two quadrants there, these are outgoing people often referred to as you know, ex, um, ex, um, extroverted. extroverted. <laughs> and so uh, pretty obvious, isn't it? So if you look at the top on the bottom, the left and the right, task or people oriented. So extroverted or introverted, outgoing, reserved. See the other words in the brackets there, even though it's on the side, you might be able to read it. The extroverted people, they like to tell. <laughs> uh, so you might reflect as we go through, they like to tell others first. Interesting, isn't it? More reserved people are more likely to ask questions and let someone else do the talking. A really big indicator. So those four areas, those two prime areas, introverted or expert. So when you're first meeting someone or you're listening to someone or you're looking at someone, just go, oh, do you think they're task focused or are they people? And you can discern that even in the words, even in the written words often. And on the left and right, so are they a quiet, reserved person or are they outgoing? Pretty, pretty simple way to just get an idea of where people sit in this quadrant initially. Okay, let's just unpack a little bit more. I'm just going to quickly, uh, whoops. All good. So all people exhibit all four behavioral styles in varying degrees or intensity, which is uh, the, the critical element about, you know, we're not right or wrong here, but you do have all four things that are possible. As we mentioned earlier, our ability to be able to let go of our default style behaving and adopt the other style, so stretch outside our normal comfort zone, our ability to be able to tolerate not just our own style, but other styles as well, is what we're after. That's the goal, to get better at being all four rather than our just default. So... Therefore, we do have them all. We are capable of them all. It's a matter of enhancing them. So what I'm going to do, rather than unpack a lot of the details about those four different behavioural styles, I'm going to go through a lot of scenarios here that might help you just understand for yourself. Firstly, remember who you are, that awareness. And then the next thing to be able to notice these in other people. Remember, I'll give you these things later. There's lots of text here. So if you don't, you don't feel free uh, that you have to write it down, we'll share it later. So that D, that dominant section, remember the top left-hand side, the red colour. And so that was what an extroverted, introverted. So it's an introverted individual, but strong, strong process driven as such. So you can see some of the things here as you're interacting and observing that individual. What you need to be able to do is emphasise shaping their environment by overcoming opposition and challenge. They love challenge and uh, love the fight, if you like. Often in um, business is where you'll find the majority of these people. In business, this style of behavior is predominant. 
the majority of business owners will be in this space. Now, that doesn't mean you can't own a business if you're not in this space. But what it does mean is that you need to be able to adopt some of these traits. And I'm not going to read them all, obviously, because you can read them all there. So they are motivated by challenge, power, authority, and direct answers. Cut to the chase is the, what you need to do with these, these people. Don't fluff around like I'm doing now. <laughs> Already, if you're a D-profile individual, you're probably getting a little antsy and you're probably starting to go, next slide, come on, I've read that, let's go. <laughs> uh, and getting through a presentation like this, sitting in a room where there's a formalised presentation will be quite challenging for you in so many ways. And so you can see some of the fears there, loss of control in their environment and being taken advantage of, uh, having their ego challenged in so many ways. And so as you look at those people, so self-confident, decisive, risk takers, you know, they storm into a room as such. Uh, just moving on, some more things. Again, lots of data here for you, those uh, other people that love data. I'm not going to read it all. See, there's some strengths. Also, any strength overdone becomes a weakness. So some limitations. Uh, a big limitation there is these people will often seem to be unapproachable. They might be a little scary <laughs> in so many cases because of their demeanor and the way they have massive amounts of confidence. The positive things you know, can make massively fast decisions, powerful, strong decision makers, these people. Uh, so look at the bottom there. You can be more effective if you're a D profile person. That patience that we talked about might be challenged already today. You know, toning down that directness. So some really good examples there. Just going to move through reasonably quickly, as I mentioned. You know you're a high D. You know you're in that quadrant, that top left-hand quadrant. When you walk around the lake, you decide you'd like to walk across it for a change. <laughs> uh, I love that. You know, it's, this is all about getting to the end. I know, I know this, uh, this trait very well because I live with one. <laughs> uh, I married this. You know, I like decisive high D. I like uh, strength in human beings. So it's a wonderful thing. So you feel the urge to direct, tra direct traffic. <laughs> so, uh, you want to tell people what to do. Now, don't make this wrong. As we said at the start, this is not an evil thing. It's just the, uh, the strength of mind. It's a wonderful thing. So you remember about the good old days when it was legal to duel and guns were, <laughs> were okay to settle an argument. Uh, now, that's a fairly extreme nature, and I'm not in any way condoning that, by the way. But it's, uh, it's an example of what is, uh, is possible in people's heads. So you arrive at work at 8 a.m. and by 8.03, no one is speaking to you <laughs> in the work environment, quite strong. So these are extreme examples. But if anything resonates with you, then, well, maybe you're in that zone. So remember, it's not right or wrong. Moving on to the next space, the I, the extroverted people person. And again, not to read all of it there, but you can see motivated by social recognition, group activities, relationships. This individual is what you might call the classic stereotypical salesperson. Uh, flashy clothes, loud, loud and noisy. When they walk in the room, everybody has to look at them. Uh, they're very, very social creatures, talk a lot, love interactions. They live to be in a group of people and chatting. If you look across the room and look at uh, three or four people, the eye, the high eye, will probably be the one in the middle chatting and waving hands around and holding court. <laughs> Unless, of course, they're all high eyes, if that three or four people, then you won't be able to hear yourself for the noise because they'll all be talking over each other <laughs> as such. So whereas the D is not as extroverted a profile, strong, strong, decisive decision-making, you know, operating a business, getting to the end result, for the eye, it's more about the journey. That journey of uh, the life with people is massive, is huge. Uh, you can see there the limitations are probably worth looking at. Impulsiveness, disorganised, lack of follow through. They're not worried about organising things because they're so busy talking to people and interacting and having fun, which is fine. Uh, the eye, a lot of these people are in sales, in classic sales. And that's why one of the reasons most salespeople are considered massively disorganized and operations hate them <laughs> because they miss the little details as such. They put in orders without all the information as such. And again, I'm generalizing. So more about you. You can read some of the things there. As I said, a bit disorganized.
you need to listen more carefully sometimes. The, the massive positives, the strengths are incredible. I mean, this is a huge part of humanity. The, the entertainers, the entertainment industry would probably be dead without these people. You know, often very, very inspirational and just love to follow. Great fun to be around. They're usually great uplifters and helping uh, other people feel good about themselves as well. And so everything I'm talking about this morning is really the extreme yeah. version of each. There'll be a version in each of these that is maybe a little bit less extreme mm -hmm. as such, but it doesn't mean that's not you. So please take that as read. And here's some of the examples in life. So you leave a message, you know, <laughs> you need to call four times to leave the entire message, you know, so the message banks are not big enough. You've got to keep calling back because you love a chat as such. I think I know a couple of people like that too. Uh, oh, I particularly love this one. <laughs> you offer to help the elderly lady across the street when she's sitting on her front porch with no intention of moving. You know, so, so, so keen to be able to talk and interact with someone that you, you make things happen. Uh, I must confess to having this one a little bit. You dial the wrong number and engage the person in conversation about half an hour anyway. I must absolutely confess to having done this, <laughs> maybe not half an hour. But I've been known to talk to the telemarketers at call for half an hour. Uh, and I quite enjoy that, the challenge of that in, in so many ways. So there's a little indication of my, some of my behavioural traits, if you like. Uh, and the bottom one's so true as well, isn't it? You know, strangers as a friend you haven't met yet. Oh, true, high eyes definitely think that. Let's move on to the next one, S. So quite introverted people, person introverted. And... This is what I call the glue of the earth, glue of the planet. This is what keeps the, keeps the world ticking over, keeps us together. It's about 45% of the population, so there's a good chance you're in this category as well. It's the one that you might call the nurturing. I, I like to think of it as the motherly or the grandmotherly, if you like grandparent, grandfather, fatherly figure, you know, that nurturing, caring, heartfelt behaviour that is so common. This is the person that, uh, you know, if you drop in to visit them, they, they've got you on the couch in a heartbeat, they brought you cake, they've got a cup of tea, can I get you a cushion? Uh, they're really caring and nurturing. Wonderful, wonderful people that keep it all together. So quick overview again. Remember, if you think you're a D profile or an I profile, that doesn't mean you can't have this behaviour. Remember, so we're not trying to exclude anybody from these behaviours. It doesn't mean you're a heartless mongrel if you're a D profile, and you can only be a good person if you're an S and a steady. That's not the case. We're not saying that. So make sure you don't sow those seeds. We have all of these things in different, uh, different areas. My wife, I've just mentioned, is a high D profile person. High D, <laughs> extreme, off the charts. But she, she goes and nurtures and cares for people, volunteers two days a week working to help others. You know, packing backpacks for kids and is an incredibly nurturing human being. So, good example is we're not just one. So, some of the, uh, the motivations you can see there: infrequent change, don't like change. They love, uh, you know, Thursday evening at seven pm. We always have sausages and mash. You know, that's what we had in years, and there's nothing wrong with keep doing it. <laughs> so, they like stability but they love sincere appreciation as such, but they're more likely to be giving it to you rather than listening to it for themselves. And they love to be involved in teams and working together with other people. Uh, some of the limitations there, I'll give you down the bottom because we need to manage both sides of it. So they're always willing to give and quite often cannot care for themselves uh, just because it's not a priority. They're too busy caring for someone else. Sometimes forget to nurture themselves and look after themselves, always saying yes to what everybody asked. So they can be abused and used in that context a little bit. We'll put there these last. So if you're in that space, it's a nice one to be able to help work through. As always, there's strengths and weaknesses in everything we do in behavioural terms. How am I going for time, Michael? Have I hit the limit yet? <laughs> Barreling through. So a little bit more track, about this. Mate. Okay, good, good. And you can see there again, remember, I'm going to give you these notes so you'll be able to read back and look at these later to get a bit more detail. Uh, so can be indecisive, too busy pleasing other people. So a great team player. They're really good listeners, these people, wonderful listeners, but trying to maybe get some strength and opinion or a decision out maybe a little bit harder. 
in the extreme. Uh, so yes, can become a bit more assertive at times, that wonderful assertive piece. So you're an, I know you're a high S when, have a look at those. <laughs> you listen for 30 minutes to a sales pitch for snow removal equipment <laughs> and you live in Queensland. <laughs> that is a, that's the epitome of S behavior. So nice, I don't want to say no. And they were, you know, they'll go through that sort of pain, if you like. Now, if you imagine the D profile person in that situation, I can guarantee you the pitch for snow, snow sales equipment would last maybe 30 seconds would be a long time. You would be lucky to get 10, 15 seconds in and they'd be going, no, 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 not for me, see you later. And so it's a subtle difference in how naturally that can occur within human beings. You know, none of that's anything we talked about. It's none of it's training, experience, skills that you automatically grow, you have to develop, but there's an organic level where we will be in one of these spaces. So you can read those others I can see there. Are you so diplomatic when you fire a person, they thank you and take you out for lunch? <laughs> uh, that is possible. And I do know someone where that's happened as well uh, along the way in some of my coaching experience. So lucky last of the four quadrants. C, conscientious. This one, I think you will uh, maybe relate to the fact that when I say accountant, if you think of the stereotypical accountant, if you're not, if you're on here and you're an accountant and you're not that, uh, you know, boring and uh, <laughs> you don't have the peaky hat on and the quill, that's okay. I don't want to insult you because this is just a stereotyping that is not always valid. But it's a, it's an analogy where I think you can get the idea. Of people they have standards, there's attention to detail, there's a lot of analytical thinking, as you can see there, and that's what accountants need to have. You know, for example, if you are an accountant, this behavioural trait is critical to your success in that industry. Similar to the D, the dominant, critical to having those skills, that decisive uh, decision-making, result-driven mindset in business is important. You know, we need an element of that in our Kayani business, but we need an element of this as well. I know Mr. Michael Simon is, is quite good on attention to detail as well has a, a bit of this in here. Does he love doing it? No, <laughs> maybe not, but he can do it uh, and learn some great skills. And I think as you reflect on all of these four different traits, you'll see people that have great success often have learned to develop a good mix of all four of these behaviours across the range and to be more complete. I guess if you sum it up, this is what growth is about. It's being better in all areas of our lives as such. Uh, so motivated by clearly defined performance expectations. And again, Michael, and those great KPIs and you know, goal setting clarity is his particular strengths. So accuracy is valued for these people. You might call them the word police or the, uh, the number police, noticing mixed calculations. Again, my high D profile wife, is actually a notoriously good proofreader. <laughs> very, very good. Whereas I can read two pages and there'll be 800 errors in it and I won't get them. But Janine will pick them up in a heartbeat. So she's developed this part of the profiling, this conscientiousness, this C part, very well also, which is great. Does she live there? No. <laughs> As such. And so limitations, overly critical of self and others. You know, as I said, word police. Uh, we have some of that in our family where it has to be right as such. So this behaviour can be, it can less than serve you at times if that's you. So a little bit more there, you can see some of the strengths. Beautifully thorough, as I said, in accountancy, great attention to detail. Someone doing my taxes, I want them to be right. Good at following standards and maybe setting standards. Uh, if you look through the limitations there, often can be aloof because they're busy with the process. It's about process for these people rather than the people. So they may not even know you're in the room necessarily. And so to improve, increase your ability to accept differences and accept things that are not the way you like it. You know, a bit more opening up and focus on communication rather than process. Stretch outside. Some other human life examples. <laughs> As always, I love these part of this presentation. So you write a five-page report when all you're asked for was the <laughs> number of your tickets. You know, that, that's a classic case where it's over-analyzing, over-attention to details. It's so good. I love that. 
Uh, you ran out of per petrol on purpose to find out exactly how fast your car goes. <laughs> uh, again, I must confess to have been pretty pretty well in this space too. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, so again, we have all four of these traits and sometimes they pop up in weird places. Um, I'm grateful that I have the ability, I think, to shift among all four. And sometimes, you know, I may engage in one of the four when I don't need to as well. And uh, I guess you're in that space as well. <laughs> I hope you certainly are. Uh, and the last one there, if you're really that extreme person in this compliance, you know, you must be compliant, a one-way ticket <laughs> for a country that's at civil war. And I apologise, that's fairly violent and it's not funny civil war, is it? But that's the reality of the extreme example. So uh, just some more elements of this as we go through, getting close to the end. So in a team, if you look at the differences between the four, so in a group of people, so the Ds, they're the initiators, the instigators, if you like, drivers, and you know, they're not intimidated by problems. They love a challenge and they'll fight through it and take it head on and smash through it. And without much consideration, you know, they won't need to think too lot. They'll just go, let's do it. Uh, we'll start now, we'll find a way to get out of it later. So the eyes, so the motivators, you know, just, come on, we can do it, rah, rah. They'll be standing up on a box, cheering everybody on. Maybe not doing much, but they'll be cheering everybody on. Energy and enthusiasm, which is, I'm sure you're aware, is wonderful in a team. So the S, that nurturing, the caring, so aligning the team and working tirelessly. They bring it together, they're that glue, as I said, the glue of life. They bring people together by uplifting and supporting and can get you a cup of tea. I'll make the sandwiches. You know, when we have some of our horrific bushfires in this country, you look at the... Uh, the news snap sometimes and there's always a, a tent and there's about six or eight individuals lined up around the tent and 4,000 sandwiches and 800 bats of cups of tea. <laughs> you know, they're made often by the S type people, which is wonderful. You know, can imagine not having that. And the C, you know, the C in the end to ensure quality and control, happily attend to the fiddly details, the attention to detail. Look at all those four together. Look at the four together. You know, if you have a team that doesn't have all of those four things, what have you got? You know, you've got a gap. You've got a big gap in my view. You have to have all four. Now, if you're on your own in your team, it's you. Guess what? You need to be able to adopt all four, not just be your default as such. And in human interactions, when you're looking to grow a team, you're looking to bring people together, guess what? They're going to be any one of these maybe more chance that they'll be the S because that's the biggest proportion of the population. But as you're talking, interacting and looking to bring people into the team, you need to be able to meet their style initially. So it's not about you being all of them. Bring others in because they will have the different dynamics that you don't have at the moment. And embrace that, love it. It's what makes teams great as such. But yes, definitely as you interact with them, make sure you consider these styles as you first connect with them. So let's look at some of the clues then quickly as we close out as to connecting and reading other people. We want to read people and, and deliver in their style so that we can connect with them because our, you know, we're in a people business, we're in a connection business, aren't we? And even today, I've tried to be strong and clear and concise, a lot of you, and I'm trying to go fast at some places to help the D profile people work. And hopefully we've talked about enough heartfelt stuff to mix it up. So in formal presentations, we try Try and do all four things, which is pretty difficult online and pretty difficult in large groups of people. So I'm just going to sh let you have a quick look at this. Remember, I'm going to send this information through. So we're going to go very quickly. When you're looking for personal decor, I'm just going to do that one across the top. If it's a D profile person, generally it'll be large, new, practical. You know, it'll, the look will be big, profound, but it'll be practical, it'll be logical, maybe high quality, but it'll be practical. If you think about the I, the flashy person, because it's an extroverted sales type is what we've talked about, you know, flashy, trendy, fun. You know, this person may have an Hawaiian shirt on. And the, the D profile, it's more likely to be formal, you know, maybe a suit in many cases, because it's that business mind of thinking, professional thinking. The S, the nurturer, guess what? It's going to be comfortable. It's going to be friendly, family. You know, there'll be lots of mementos. It'll be something, oh, my, my father had this or my mother wore this or it's the same colour my mother used to wear when you really dig into it. And the C will be economical, functional, 
and very simple. It'll do the job. That's all it will need to do in terms. Um, so again, second line, we might just touch quickly on that. When you're looking to see what category are people in, and not that we want to categorise people it's so we can best deal with them. So body language, leaning forward, big gestures for the D profile, strong, confident, in your face maybe, if you want to call it. And so the flashy person, again, there'll be lots of grinning and smile, maybe some chuckling and laughing. Again, hands, gestures, quite extroverted in nature, but it'll be big, wild movements. And of course, the S, the nurturing type, softly spoken, reassuring, there you go, a very good listening, not saying a lot. It would be a little bit of speaking. And the, the C profile, quite often very controlled, slow speaking, reserved, might be low again, but reluctant to say much. There might be a big pause between a lot of words uh, and between sentences. It'll be a considered response in many ways. So I'm gonna move on, but remember, you'll get this information after we've finished. Whole lot of stuff here that I'm not going to read because I, I realize, you know, we are well and truly into time. So I'm just going to flick through these. I'm going to give you some clues when you're looking at walking styles. So when you're physically with people, so you can read those when you get through. I'm going to give you some clues when you get into an elevator with someone. And so you can translate these to the digital world as you go through it. When you're shopping for groceries, Quick example is there the D's an impulsive shopper. No list, they won't be having a list. If you see if they have a walk around a list, you know they're not a D profile. <laughs> when you're hanging wallpaper, some really good examples. On the golf course, seeing, sitting in a moving movie theatre and something at, asking for something at their desk. So there's some really good examples here. Last slide as we close out. Michael, I'm sorry I've gone over a bit. People join or buy from people they like. You know, that connection part is so big in what we do. So, so big. Without connection, in my personal opinion, nothing happens. And so this is simply another way of being able to more effectively connect with other people. So a lot of what we've done here today is visual and face-to-face, -face, but transfer it to the digital space that we operate massively in. It still applies. And the same principle applies. These people still behave in the same manner digitally. You know, when, you, uh, when you're in a deep profile on email, it won't even say hello. It'll just say, do this, and that's it. Press the send button. <laughs> you know, it might be the same in the text messages, won't it? I'm sure you have that. So the size of the outcomes to or the size of your connection is, in my opinion, is, is massive. Uh, success in business is about leadership, in my view. Leadership is about influence. And DISC is simply another way of being able to influence people more efficiently, more effectively, in my opinion view so i will create a pdf out of all that drop it down in the group and so you can have a look at a bit more detail sorry lots of data for you d profile people and you i profile people come back now we're finished and <laughs> you can wake up <laughs> you can stop looking at your phones and, and entertaining yourself elsewhere <laughs> and i don't say that to make anybody wrong because that's the way it is for me sometimes too so i really appreciate the time michael's fantastic to be on lovely to see everybody so I'll hand back to you. Not a problem. Thank you so much, Rick. Um, you know, that is absolutely priceless um, information to, to get some knowledge around that and have some awareness around that when you're building your business. Uh, it's, it's priceless. You know, think about, um, you know, I guess the bread and butter step of our, uh, our of building our business, I would call, well, basically I call, you know, the three-way call or the three-way catch-up. That, that's the bread and butter. You know, that's the, the big time conversion uh, step in our system. Um, now imagine not having any awareness around that. So the person running the three-way call has no awareness around that. They're like a, a high eye, fluffy, happy, you know, party person, and they're chatting to a D. Um, the three-way call is going to crash and burn. Um, and that D person is going to be going, why would I be going into business here? So, you, you know, you, you, as you said, you've got to be a bit of a chameleon. You've got to have some awareness around this and, and um, practice dancing outside of your quadrant a bit, uh, you know, when you're building the business. Um, but then think about it as the overall thing. And I was actually, uh, it was about a year ago, um, just before the COVID stuff went mad, I was in Idaho for a, a diamond summer and um, we had, I don't know, 150 people in a room um, and we were going through, it wasn't disc, there's a few different ways, but they're all very, very similar. 
and um, it, we're going through this. And uh, a few, they, they've got us to do a few things. It was half a day, um, and they broke us off into our individual groups. So all of the high dominating, uh, like you, you dominate in one, you have a secondary one, and then you have uh, an adopted one. So they broke us out into our dominated areas. And uh, my, my dominant one is D, um, my secondary is I, and my adapted is C. Um, and in our group, um, it was crazy. It was like straight to the point. It was like, it, it was lethal in there. We got so much done that it was insane. Um, but, you know, there was a few feathers ruffled. There was a, you know, there was a bit of, uh, you know, uh, short words, I guess. Uh, but at the end, nobody took any of it personal and we were just like winning. Or we, winning was the number one thing. And then I remember looking over at the I group and they were so loud. They were having so much fun. Um, and then when we got back, like this is after having about 40 minutes to get a task done, nothing at all was done. There was just, and, and the paper, ours was written in red writing on the paper in thick texter. Theirs was like in um, like multicolors, had little drawings around the outside of it and like little swirly bits and, and all of that. And, and, uh, and actually due to my dominant uh, D part of that exercise. I don't even know what the C and the S had, <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, it tells me that <clears throat> a, a, an organization stacked with too much of one personality type is going to be flawed. Um, and then the second part that really highlighted that for me is they gave us these tubes. These everyone got a tube and they were a certain length compared to which profile you were and you had to tap the tube and it made a noise. And so when we were just tapping, it was like unbearable, right? The, the whole room picture these, you know, like the, the, when you're at the footy and you tap those things and they make a noise. So we're tapping them and, and the, the noise, it was just terrible, unbearable noise. Then what they did is they got somebody at the front of the room for each color and they tapped in a certain rhythm one color was like that the other one was like fast and the other one was like like and they had all these different rhythms and so if you your corresponding color you had to tap and it sounded phenomenal it was and and i've got a recording of it which i'll try and get up into the wit group it sounded amazing it was like the best song you've ever heard in your life and it's just music tapping these things and it's the i guess the message was as a team you know we can make beautiful music if we're organized um, you know, if there's no organization and it's just messy, it, it's crazy. But then the next step that they, that really sealed the deal for me is they took one out. They got one group to stop and it sounded terrible again. It sounded empty. So if you don't have a well-balanced organization with a D, I, a C and an S, um, you're not going to make the beautiful music. It's not going to, it's not going to sound right. It's not going to be balanced and you, you're not going to go and be able to achieve um, everything that you can, uh, you know, having known that. So I know it's a little bit longer than the 25, 30 minutes we usually go, but I really believe it's super valuable um, because it, it just helps with communication. It helps with team building. It helps with, uh, you know, conversions and, and having success in the long run. And it helps, as I said at the beginning, with what triggers you and how you react. Um, and uh, I guess having awareness around where we need to uh, increase our, I guess, where we need to get that adopted stuff happening, uh, you know, to help us become more of that complete package. So thank you so much, Rick, for jumping on board and uh, and sharing that. And thanks for jumping on, guys. I'll, uh, I'll get that recording saved and tomorrow that will be uploaded into the whatever it takes Project 50 Facebook uh, resource page. So uh, have a great weekend and catch you guys along the way. Thanks, guys. Have fun. See ya. <clears throat>